Hey everyone, how are you doing? On today's video, we're gonna talk about lists. Now, let's start IEX once again. What are lists and how are they different from traditional arrays like in JavaScript? So, a list in Elixir is a singly linked list, meaning that if I have a list like this, one, two, three. What is happening under the hood is actually the following. Each node of the list is going to have two values. You're going to have the value of the item itself, like one, and then the address in memory for the second item. So then the node number two is going to have the value two, and then the address in memory for the address for the item three. And then finally, on the last node of the list, we're going to have the value three and then no address, meaning that we reached the end of the list. And this is different from an array in JavaScript because an array in JavaScript is saved in memory sequentially and a linked list is not. Address number two can be anything, anywhere in memory. Address number three can be anywhere in memory. Like it can save the first node in some place and then the second node on a completely different place. And apparently Jose Valin chose to use a linked list instead of an array because it's better for concurrency. So it's saved all over the place. I don't know where's the first item, like where's the second one, where's the third one. And in JavaScript, I know, because if I know the address of the first item, I can easily go until like the second item, the third item, because I just need to grab the first address in memory and then uh, go to the, to the next one and then the next one, and then the next one to find the next items because they are sequential in memory. And in Elixir, it's not sequential. Now, there are some other consequences uh, besides the fact that if I have a list here in Elixir, two, three, four, uh, as I mentioned before, if I try to access the first, I mean, the second item of the list, with the index one, that is not going to work. If I try to access the third item of the list, that is also not going to work because I cannot easily find uh, the third item. Uh, besides that, another consequence of using linked lists is that some operations are super fast and they're cheap uh, to run and the other ones are super expensive. So if I have my list here, since I don't know where are the other uh, nodes of the list, I need to traverse it to find it. I need to go to the first item and ask, okay, what's the address of the next one? Then I go to the next one and I ask, okay, what's the address of the next one? Until I reach the last one, which doesn't have an address saved. And I know that I reached the end of the list. Uh, so if I try to add a new item to the list in the beginning, I can do the following syntax. I can do it like this. I'm going to add the number one and then plus plus and then the list. I added one to the beginning of the list. That is a very cheap operation because uh, the complexity of this operation is O of one. I am running one operation. I'm getting the first address of the first node of the list and then adding another one that points to the existing list. And if I try to do the same thing, but instead of adding one to the beginning of the list, now if I try to add at the end of the list, this is a very expensive operation because I need to traverse the whole list to find where is the last item and then add this new item after the last because it's not sequential in memory. I have no idea where this four 
is saved in memory, okay? And yeah, now you already know the syntax to add new items to a list. You grab your existing list and then plus plus, and then you add another array with the items that you want to add, like eight, nine, uh, 10. And yeah, if you want to add in the beginning, you actually need to run the array that you want to add, plus plus, and then the list. And again, this is a very fast operation. Now, if I want to remove an item from the list, I am going to use the minus minus operator. So I can do it like this, list minus minus. And then I'm going to try to remove existing items. So if I try to remove the number 8, 9, and 10, the end result of this operation is the same list. Because I don't have the number 8, I don't have the number 9, I don't have the number 10 inside this list. So I'm not going to subtract anything. And if now I add the numbers 3 and 4, and then all the other ones, the end result is a list with the number 2. Because I try removing the number 3, and we succeeded. We succeeded again with the number 4, but we don't have the 8, 9, or 10, so nothing happens on this case. Now, another important operation that you're going to do on lists is getting the head and the tail of the list. And to do that, you're going to call the HD function, which stands for head. So you're going to call HD and then the list. And then using a parenthesis on Elixir is optional. Whenever you're calling a function, you can do HD and then list or HD parenthesis list like this. And you're going to get the first element of the list, which is the head. We also have the tail of the list. Now pay attention. The tail is not the last element of the list. The tail is the rest of the list once we remove the head. So if the list is two, three, four, and the head is two, the tail should be an array of three and four. Let me try that. And the tail function is the TL function. You can call it, call it like this. And there you go. And one important note here is that you might uh, remember from a previous video that I said that every function needs to be inside a module in Elixir, right? And I'm here just calling HD and TL without, with no module. Like, what's going on? What's the module of the head and tail? So actually, the head and tail, they belong to the kernel module. But the kernel module is used so much in an Elixir application that it is auto imported uh, on every module. So instead of doing kernel.hd list and then kernel.tl list, you can just type hd and tl directly. And there are so many useful functions on the kernel module. You can type kernel dot and then tab, like even the math operations, they are inside the kernel. So I could do kernel dot plus and then sum uh, two numbers. Uh, but you don't need to do that because the kernel is auto imported. Okay, so and other operations that you might do on lists, they are covered on the list module. So you can type list dot and check uh, what's the the available functions for a list. And so you can get the first element of a list by doing head, or you can type list dot first, and then you get the first item of the list. And if you want the last item and not the tail, like you want specifically the last item, you can do list dot last, and then call that on your function. Let me use a parentheses here. And this way you get the last list instead of the tail. Now, always remember that the further away you go from the beginning of the list, the more expensive this operation is going to cost. So if you need to find the last item of the list, you will need to traverse the whole list. 
So if you're, if for example, you're manually creating a list with like 10 items, then sure, go ahead. Use a list.last, get the tail, get the last element, do whatever you want that should be fast, 10 items like super fast. But if you're querying the database and you're getting like 10,000 records and you wanna check what's the last one, do not do a list.last on that list of 10,000 uh, items, okay? And then we're gonna explore this more in the future, but we can also use another module for dealing with lists. And this module is called enum. Now the enum module, you can call to deal with enumerables and a list is an enumerable. So we can use the list module or the enum module to deal with lists. So let's try to run a random enum function here. Um, let me see, concat, let me see how to call the concat function from enum. I'm gonna type h and then to get the help on the terminal, enum dot, uh, I forgot the name, uh, concat, concat, okay. All right, so concat, concatenates the numerable on the right with the numerable on the left. Uh, okay, this function produces the same result as the plus plus operator. Ah, oh, nice. So instead of doing something like this, list uh, plus plus uh, eight, nine, apparently I can do enum dot concat, and I'm gonna concat the list with eight and nine, all right, right, that's the same thing. And yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And oh yeah, always keep in mind that whenever we're calling a function on Elixir, we're not mutating it. So even though I'm doing a bunch of operations here to add the eight or nine to the list, if I call the list again, it is still going to be the old result that I created a while ago. If I want to explicitly change the list, I need to rebind it to the new values that I want to add like this. And then if I call the list again, it's going to have the same, uh, the new value because I had to rebind it. Okay. So always keep it, keep this in mind. We're not mutating anything in memory. We're creating a new variable. On this case, it's the same variable, the same name, but we're transforming the data and you need to save it somewhere because there's no mutation uh, on Elixir, right? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.